Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 10. Something has to be done for the older people. That's the way I look at it. A Minnesota woman is taking a stand for herself and others living in assisted living facilities. She says the coronavirus pandemic has taken away too much from what time she has left. Valley News team's Courtney Lockie checks into this whistleblower issue, sharing the woman's story and what she's fighting for. I've been on quarantine now for a little bit, and I don't know how long I can take it. Lillian Dahl has been at Serenity Assisted Living in Dilworth, Minnesota for nearly two years, but she says the last five months have felt like an eternity. I'm tired of being in here. I want to get out. And she says she's not the only one who feels this way. I have a uh, a friend that has said uh, she doesn't want to wake up in the morning. Dahl is in a 14-day quarantine after spending the holiday with her family. It's not the first time she's had to be in isolation, and it most likely won't be the last, she says. It just seems like it's no point in living, like if you're in prison. She says she's thankful for the people at Serenity, saying they've gone above and beyond to make the best out of a bad situation. I talked with the owner of Serenity. He says they have to follow the health department's guidelines, and in doing so, they've been able to stay COVID free so far. Doll knows their hands are tied. Still, she wants more freedom. She says she's even been reaching out to the governor. It's not right. It's cruelty. That's what it is, it's cruelty. They don't understand one single bit what it's like to be in here. Dahl says she hopes by speaking up, she and others will be able to reunite with their families freely. If I can help them to be able to enjoy life, then I've done something for them. In Dilworth, Minnesota, Courtney Lockie, Valley News Live. The people we talked with say families can make appointments to visit loved ones outside of the facility. Time slots are 30 minutes and you must stay six feet apart. And if you need help uncovering corruption in your community, call our whistleblower hotline 237-6576 and leave your tip. A member of our investigative team will get on the case and go to work to expose the truth. The father of a man killed by a Devil's Lake police officer is calling on the attorney general to reopen his son's case. Daniel Fuller was unarmed when he died on July 5th of 2018. Former Devil's Lake officer Brandon Potts reportedly hit Fuller in the back of the head several times when the gun suddenly discharged. Although an autopsy ruled Fuller's death a homicide, the Ramsey County State's attorney never brought charges. She ruled Potts had probable cause to use deadly force, and there's nothing to indicate the shot was intentional. I got to go like this and tell him I miss him. I want him back. Lord, bring him back. And that ain't going to happen. Terry Fuller says in light of the recent police killings, his son's death should be reinvestigated. Potts was fired in 2019, and he has filed a wrongful termination lawsuit. The decision by a U.S. District Court judge to stop the Dakota Access Pipeline was a blow for the energy industry in North Dakota. Judge James Bosberg said the move was the only appropriate remedy because the Corps of Engineers did not adequately evaluate the environmental impacts of the pipeline. The judge didn't rule the pipeline illegal outright, rather ruling the permitting process was insufficient. The Public Service Commission, which has overseen much of the permitting process, must watch a pipeline they approved get shut down. The oil that's produced in North Dakota that's currently transported on the Dakota Access uh, system, which is a substantial amount of our production, probably more than half of the state's production today, transports through the Dakota Access system on that pipeline. That will find other avenues. The most likely path for oil transport will be crewed by rail. In the decision, Energy Transfer noted there is no viable pipeline alternative for transporting the 570,000 barrels of Bakken crude that DAPL is capable of carrying each day, and that railroads won't be enough to fill the gaps. The company said they will be appealing the decision. A new environmental impact report could have similar results to the first one for the pipeline, and the permits could be reinstated in the coming months. Voters in North Dakota may soon be able to make changes to the way they cast their ballots, as well as who would draw legislative lines. The group, North Dakota Voters First, says they have submitted enough signatures to Secretary of State Al Jager's office to get the constitutional measure on the November ballot. 
Jager has 35 days to review those petitions. The measure includes an introduction of rank choice voting. In a ranked choice system, if a candidate receives the majority of votes, they win. If no candidate gets a majority on the first round of voting, the candidate with the fewest votes is disqualified, and any vote for that candidate would go to that voter's next choice. And that process would repeat until a candidate receives a majority of the votes. The measure would also have the state's newly formed Ethics Commission redraw legislative districts. The state legislature holds that power for now. Those districts would have to be as equal in population size as possible, keep counties, cities, and tribal boundaries together as much as possible, and maximize the number of politically competitive districts. You've probably heard of or received an email phishing scam. Experts say the scammers behind them are making the phony emails harder to catch. The Attorney General's office reports five North Dakotans have already fallen victim to a specific email scam in 2020, costing them a total of $31,000. Experts say the computer technician scam is making the rounds and working on victims due to how realistic it comes across. The scammers will identify as a technician trying to help you fix a problem with your computer. Computer. Once you've given them access, they have control and the ability to access all of your personal and financial information. They just use it to talk you through a process in which they download spyware or malware to your computer so it's now infected. You can experience these computer problems in real time so suddenly it looks very legitimate like you're actually having these computer problems. Grossman says your best defense is to never give out passwords or allow others to access your computer. If, if you think you've received a scam email, Grossman says to report it to the Attorney General's office by calling this phone number, 1-800-472-2600. State health officials are confirming 33 new cases of COVID-19 across the state of North Dakota. The total number of active cases is now 419. Of the new cases, 17 were reported from Cass County. No new deaths have been linked to COVID-19 and the death toll remains at 80. There are 22 patients currently hospitalized. Over 3,300 are listed as recovered. The state health department in Minnesota is confirming 434 new cases of COVID-19 with three more deaths linked to the illness. In total, there have been 1,474 deaths linked to COVID-19 and there are currently 258 patients hospitalized. There are now 3,188 active cases in Minnesota. Nearly 34,000 people are listed as